Well, we've written the story paragraph by paragraph, the beginning, middle, and end. And now we want to actually take this to ebook, hardback book, video, but we're going to have a lot of images from people drawing the characters, drawing the backgrounds, drawing the cars, the coffee pots, whatever's in the story. So we have to take all of these images and words and plan how they will be displayed. So I thought I would bring in some examples of storyboards. Yes, every movie you see, every cartoon, every book, every comic book, every ebook, somebody has to sit down and plan out what goes where and how are you going to visually depict these words and phrases and this would be called a storyboard. So um, there are a ton of good storybook uh, storyboard examples on the internet. I just went to Google and I typed in blank storyboards and on Google they have about gosh 500 of them. So, so I chose some to kind of kind of look at and review um, if you're doing this in a, L, uh, a K through 6 or 5 school then different students will be able to depict depict things in, in certain ways that maybe 6th graders would approach it differently and, and maybe you're an adult you know who knows who's looking at this video so here we go let's just take a peek at some of these examples now this was in the Google Storyboard, so this, to me, this really isn't a storyboard. This is almost a finished prod product, but a storyboard really isn't that different than what you're seeing here. You have some people talking, who's saying what, what's in the background. Uh, it, it, it depicts what's going on, though I, I think that this would be a, a finished pr product. Uh, so now we go into uh, a, a, a basic storyboard with really sketchy figures, though you can tell the person who actually drew these had some artistic talents. Uh, the ability to put in perspective, as you can see here by the slants and the lines under the door and the scribbles for the characters. But here's, here's the, uh, an important part, a place for dialogue, a place for action. You'll have to make the decision on what storyboard works for you. Uh, again, here is a very basic storyboard that you can see the person has artistic talent. But look at the scribbles over here. Each frame, I will call them, has a little description of what's going on. And a storyboard um, need not be this uh, uh, artistically advanced. Sure, hey, it would be great if you have this artist. Gosh, hey, let, let them do all the pictures. But... Uh, but that's 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 uh but you have a square and a place for text a square a place for text i like this storyboard even though these uh visually are pretty advanced even though they're basic I, i'd say the artistically they're they're somewhat advanced except for this one down at the bottom but you have a place here what's going on with the video what's going on with the audio and of course, if you're doing a picture book or an ebook, uh, I guess you might just get rid of uh, maybe the video col column and just put text over here. But I, I, li I like, you might be doing a video. You may be doing a semi animation cartoon in brief kind of thing. So, I, but I like this. Uh, uh, and if you get rid of these words and just get rid of the pictures and keep this basic diagram, notice there's a the place up here for the name of the people and if you get rid of all the text and the images in these little TVs you could print these out and provide students with these let's see what else do we have here look how basic this one is I like this one too a place for the name date you can change period with what period with page number notice they've got the page numbers up here stick figures how appropriate is that we know who the characters are maybe just put a little letter by the stick figure's leg to indicate who the leg belongs to. And then just a little summary of what's going on here. Oh, Sally said hi. Oh, hi, Sally. Oh, they're both happy, you can see, and we go through and da-da-da-da. I mean, a storyboard doesn't have to be real complex. <clears throat> For some reason, I really like this one, though. Though it's all the same stuff, a place to write something at the top, 
um, uh, a frame, action, what's going on with the voice, very basic scribbles, though this person does have artistic talent. But and but but to, to duplicate this, you just get rid of the content, get rid of this text. I think maybe I like this one because it's in color. But uh, now, now here, I, I for some reason, I like this one, but I don't like the amount of room that you have to add text here. Uh, well, but I guess if you get rid of these lines, maybe drop them down a little bit, just leave the blank lines, have more space down here. Uh, but, but I do like the concept. You have a picture, and, and of course, this is an artist work, you, you can see. And, but, but you want to be able to get rid of these images and keep the empty lines and the empty space so that, so, and then, and then uh, let people know that they're supposed to just fill in the blanks. There's ugly as their drawings may be. Lastly, we have this one. It's a little fuzzy. I enlarged it. Uh, but here, here you go. This is the basic thing. Uh, blank space for an image. Here's what's going on. Blank space for an image. Here's what's going on. So as you can see, the storyboarding process is, is the fun part. It's the, it's the, it is one of the most fun parts of this whole project, and students get to get get to get to take some art time and relax and draw some depictions. And so, so I guess my suggestion is, now that we've written the whole story, you give every student a paragraph, a paragraph, and a blank storyboard to fill in. The empty spaces. Well, what are you going to show in this paragraph? And I think if you do that, the students will have a lot of fun. Then what you do is you decide whose depiction works best, and then you have to figure out how you're going to get that done, given how you're doing your artwork.